Hello, everybody. This is Gary Kay. You are watching a special edition of my Rant and Rave podcast, a video edition, and again, another demo. We've been doing some demos, and that's why you see me small and the, uh, and the, the guests larger. I am joined by Aurangzeb Khan, who's the president of Altia Systems. Aurangzeb, how are you doing today? Doing great, Gary. Nice to be in this video with you today. Well, I appreciate it, and I'm betting that most, just about in, nobody on here knows who you are, but they're about to find out who you are. Because uh, it's not often that I find a product that I get so excited about that I that I basically force you to come and get on a live video with me. Uh, this is an amazing product. It's called Panacast is the is the the brand. Panacast Two is the product, and I want you to start by uh, this is going to get people excited, especially those of you who are doing video and uh, video conferencing UCT systems. I want you to start by explaining what it is, and we're actually using the product right now. So go ahead. That's right. Yeah, thank you, Gary. So yeah, so so it's it's a fundamentally new approach to building video cameras, and and the product is actually physically very tiny. You know, so this is an iPhone 6 Plus, and this is the device, and you're kind of seeing how tiny it is. Um, but it actually consists of three uh, three full video cameras. We run all of them synchronously and in parallel, and we take their output, put it into a chip we've designed called the Panacast Video Processor. And in that chip, we have now about 33 patents worth of new computer vision and imaging science technology, where we basically synchronize, stitch, and optimize the video in real time within the device, and then we output a 180 wide by 54 tall video stream with 4K pixel density. So okay, I want to stop you there. I want you to stop you there because one thing that they should have caught is that you're outputting a very wide, wide video stream, and you're capturing a lot of information. But yet, when they're looking at this, they're seeing a normal aspect ratio image, and that's intentional because right now, the camera and the audio is focused on you because you're the primary presenter, and it is smart enough to know that you're the primary presenter, and it's focused on just you because of that, right? That's exactly right. You know, we've been working, um, you know, one of the nice things with doing this approach, it's a completely new approach to camera system design is that we can develop new algorithms and new technology and implement it in the in the processor on board. Think of it like a racing engine. It doesn't do everything, but it does some things really well. So one of the things we've just launched is called Intelligent Zoom. And what that does is Intelligent Zoom basically detects human faces, so the cameras act as sensors. And we wrote an algorithm saying, you know, if basically zoom out, out or in automatically to include everybody in the conversation. And as you said, right now, you know, we're having a one-on-one, -on -one, so it's basically framing me and centering me. And okay. if I had more people, then it would pull out. Okay, so I want you to demo that because off-camera we did that okay. before we started just to uh, yeah. make sure that I could see it on Skype because one of the limitations we have is that we're joining with a standard Skype camera, which is what I have here. But I want you to ask uh, – I want you to ask oh, – there you go. Hey. Yep. How are yeah. you? There you go. <laughs> hey. Uh, and so now we have two people. Priya's in the meeting as well. Uh, Priya right. is in charge of marketing for your organization, and, and, and she connected me with you when I got excited about the product. And I found out about the product from an article that I read online, and I was like, why hasn't anyone in this industry talked about this product? Because <laughs> the problem is, and the way I look at it, the problem is, is that you're not aiming yourself at our industry. Our industry is only one little piece of the giant pie that you guys have. Um, but yet um, our industry, I think, is, is going to benefit huge from your technology. But now what happened is the, the system, there was no – PTZ here. There was no camera operator. Uh, the system detected that she uh, jumped in frame, and now it is going to move back and forth based on who's talking, who's moving, and who's engaged. That's it. That's exactly it. It's trying to figure out, you know, like it's seeing two faces, and it's trying to frame us and center us the best it can. And, you know, if we had more people join in, and if you like later on, I can try that. But basically, it'll do exactly as you said. It'll, it'll pull out or pull in, and, and all of that is happening, you know, inside, algorithmically, inside this device. And it comes out as a simple USB 3. You plug it in, uh, and it's feeding you data on the USB 3. So what that means is it'll work with everything, right? Right, it's a work standard with UCC camera. And, 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 I want, I, and I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but I want to make sure that some of the technical points get explained because there are going to be a lot of integrators that watch this and a lot of techies, including a bunch of companies in our industry that are going to try to buy you. Uh, so, therefore, what's happening is one <laughs> thing that's different here is that um, unlike the cloud-based systems that we have today, all the processing is happening inside that little teeny camera that you have there. And you said you had 30-some patents. Uh, you just sort of casually mentioned that. That's a lot. But you have a, a lot of patents inside there that's handling that algorithm because one of, the things I, one of the things I asked when I first met you was, why hasn't Canon or Sony or 
Nikon or somebody copied this or, or come up with this before you? And one, one, one answer is, well, you're focused on a specific segment of the industry and, and you had these patents. Uh, but the second thing is, in the world of video conferencing, we're revealing meeting rooms where there's sometimes there's only one-on-one discussions and sometimes there's ten-on-one discussions. This is going to be hugely value, valuable because you don't need a camera operator, you don't need a multi-camera system, and it automatically does all that framing. That's exactly, you got it exactly right, Gary. And I think that, you know, we're, we're delighted. Uh, you know, first of all, we really appreciate you picking, out, picking it up and your interest. And the thing is that we're going to keep evolving the technology very rapidly, right? Because now that we figured out, and we had the philosophical belief that the right place to do all that heavy lifting, you know, we, we process 300 million pixels every second in this device, right? We're doing a lot. Now, you know, we don't want to put that on your Mac or PC because it would bog that down. And if I had to send all that data to a, over a network to a data center somewhere and back, it would just take so long that it wouldn't be real time. We wanted to do it in real time, right? So the core idea was, you know, if you think about our eyes give us so much information and we instinctively use that. We, you know, we move our head and our eyes to focus on people, to read body language, to understand what's going on. We wanted to create that experience. Uh, you know, people have done that in the past with very uh, costly, big room systems with multiple screens and multiple cameras, all positioned exactly right, right? And that's great, but that's kind of not scalable. You know, and, and we're seeing a huge growth now for us uh, in video conferencing, particularly people putting up a lot of huddle rooms. You know, with the growth of cloud-based uh, software, this device as a standard, you know, UVC compliant plug and play really just gives people, uh, you know, at a very nominal price point an amazing, you know, like for a few thousand dollars, you can recreate that sense of those very high-end telepresence type situations. And the way, best way for me to describe this for sort of the integrator community to understand how this is working is I want to reverse it out. Everyone here is, in our industry is familiar with image mapping for projection displays where you've, you're image mapping to a bunch of uh, a, a giant building or you're putting multiple projectors together to create a large seamless image. This is the opposite of that. What we're doing is image mapping a camera. Basically the camera's capturing all the information and it's giving us only what we want to see and what we need to see based on what we're listening to or watching. That is pretty interesting. That is really creative, and, and, and you're going to make a lot of money. Someone's going to buy you. <laughs> a lot of people are going to try to buy yeah. you, and, and, and you're going to be a rich man. Uh, so, uh, and, and, uh, so <laughs> Priya, you, you're working at a great company. Congratulations <laughs> for this, <laughs> getting this marketing gig. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think as soon as I post this, uh, a whole bunch of uh, UC companies are going to be calling you. But uh, the integrator community is going to love this product. Now, I want you to show them one other thing, because you gave me a sneak peek, I, if you're willing to. I don't know if you meant to only yeah. keep this no, no, secret, sure. a sneak peek of the 4K double camera 3D version, yeah, I guess yeah. you'd say. Right. So, so, you know, as you said a minute ago, Gary, and I think that was kind of the, the – so, you know, what we did as a – basically, the company is 80 percent engineering. We love doing advanced stuff. And so we said, hey, if we can solve the hard problem, which is to do all the processing here – then we can do some pretty cool things. So last August, we introduced a VR mode. And what that is, is it's a different set of algorithms that are optimized for outdoor use. So you basically set it down and you record outdoors. And it gives you this immersive experience if you view it like an Oculus or HTC. It feels like a, a big wraparound video around your eyes, right? Right. And when we said, okay, you know, then last October, we took it one step further. And yeah, so, so we, we got two awards at CES this year. One was for uh, for this device, and what this is is it's a it's a real time 3D camera system. And think of it as a biomimetic design. You know how we process 3D. Our eyes are about 70 millimeters apart, and that gives us the ability through parallax to discern depth. Uh, and so, because we do local stitching, what we the only incremental thing we had to do was to synchronize the two systems together. So now you get basically left eye, right eye coming at you, and it comes out in a stacked uh, 4K frame. So you can immediately load that on YouTube or Facebook Live or stream it live. Uh, and then if somebody wants to view it later on as a recorded content, they can use cardboard play or any kind of HMD they like, uh, head-mounted display. And they'll get a really uh, good sense from about, let's say, 5 feet to 20 feet, which is how our eyes process the world right. you know, of three-dimensionality. Yeah, so, so does, think has, about has, has, Gold, has the GoPro founder tried to buy you? <laughs> this seems like it's going to be huge for these action <laughs> camera things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, no, as you said, we're, we're like kind of this, you know, tiny guy and not so visible, but the technical community seems to like what we're doing. And it'll, 
it's starting to pick up in a big way this year. Yeah, well, we, we saw that at CES. A lot of people came by our, our meeting place. Some of the, the bigger brand names um, came by to, yeah. to see what they're about. You know, I mean, if they, if they, they're, they, they're certainly going to want to license the technology, if not integrate your product. I could see one day displays with this integrated into the display for yeah. these collaborative meeting room displays. And I could see this integrated into um, packaged options where you're putting in uh, UC-based video conferencing systems that are just use USB cameras and this be an option for you. I could see this on my monitor to do these types of webcasts in the future where, where you're trying to show more than just the talking head and you're trying to incorporate more people in the frame. And uh, yeah, I, and I think, you know, we're looking at the early version of this. Uh, for those of you who are watching this and, and, and you guys will see this when we post it, it's going back and forth a little bit based on hand gestures and facial gestures and you're talking. And I suspect that it, any, even, it doing that is still accurate, and I suspect that it's just going to keep getting better as you fine tune the uh, the algorithm over time. So I, I'm super impressed that we're doing this live demo. I kind of put you on the spot yeah. because I said the, really the only way I really want to show this is a live demo, and you're going to be at ISE. No, no. And, and let me m mention your booth, your stand number, because you're going to be at ISE in Hall 13. So that's way off in the yeah. middle of nowhere, and people are going to have to yeah. take their time to get out there because they're in E72 in Hall 13. They got to see this because. This demo does it some justice, but you have to see this live. So go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, I'm sorry to do that. You know, I was going to say we we were late to ISE. It's our first time going there. We're very excited. So we're kind of learning. You know, I mean, we're as you said, the good news this year is we're just exponentiating. I mean, business is picking up super fast, and we're already now uh, in you know basically about a year. 750 companies in in more than 35 countries are using the product. And that's, that's just for video conferencing, and we're doing a bunch of OEM deals now, and we, you know, we've had a few folks reach out to license the technology. The reach is really far, you know, so AR, VR is one. The other side is actually, think of uh, automotive, think of drones, right? Think of, I yeah. mean, so this thing, it weighs 125 grams each, right? So this is very light. You can put it on a drone, fly it around, and record real time. So, so we'd had folks uh, that we launched with Intel in October say they wanted to use it for structural inspections, you know, things like that. Yeah. So it's an exciting time because it's really kind of a whole different generation of video coming out. And not only video, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, you know, with the intelligence Zoom, we can also give you data. So we can tell you through a programmatic interface that, you know, um, I'm seeing two people. We can tell you the location where they are within the video frame. So if you're a, a CIO of a major corporation, you've got a thousand conference rooms, you may want to know, okay, well, you know, how many are in use at any given time? Am I, you know, do I need more? Am I, so you, it gives yeah. you data to more drive data. decisions. Hey, well, by the way, speaking of which, uh, this is going to seem like a stupid question, but what is the night vision capabilities of this camera? Or are you looking at a different type of camera solution for uh, low light environments? Yeah, so technically we do a cutoff, IR cutoff, so we cut off a lot of that spectrum, you know. So this was designed more for video conferencing and for that kind yeah. of use case, yeah, but yeah, the course. core algorithms uh, work work everywhere, right? And so, okay. you know, you'll see us announce some new products. Um, so to answer your question, the, the technology goes there, the product is not designed uh, necessarily to go there. We, we uh, operate comfortably at about 10 lux, which is very low light. Yeah. Yeah. We did a first generation where we were at 1 lux, um, and that was more optimized for, you know, those kind of low-light outdoor kind of settings. So the te technology can go there. Uh, the product is more right. optimized for video. Yeah, but for security applications, this is going to be huge. I mean, this is going to be big, especially the size and the price. This is going to be big. Um, and then last question is, how do I buy stock in your company? Because <laughs> this is going to be huge. And this is like, I feel like I'm talking to Cisco 15 years ago. <laughs> and I'm wondering how I can get in because uh, this well, is huge. Congratulations. It's and, very uh, kind of you, Gary. Yeah. Well, you know, we're delighted. We've got some good investors. You know, Intel Capital is our biggest investor now. Yeah. And a number of folks in the Valley who've been successful many, many times over saw the potential, as, as exactly as you're saying, because... We, if we do it right, we have a chance to become a platform for how video is done. Yeah, and the company is Altia Systems. That's spelled A-L-T-I-A -A, Systems. And if you go to altiasystems.com, uh, you'll see it's the Panacast is the product line. The particular product that I've shown you, we've demonstrated, is Panacast 2. They're going to be at ISC Hall 13, E72. Um, we should consider ourselves lucky while you're still caring about our industry because this is going to be so big that we're going to be like a little teeny part of that uh, success you guys had. So. 
uh, I'm going to be able to read about you in Forbes or Fortune one day and say that I remember one time he did a video conference with me before he realized he was going to be bigger than me. So thanks for doing it. I appreciate it. Uh, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And Priya, thank you for setting all this up. Uh, I'll see you guys at ISC, and uh, congratulations on such an awesome product. Thank you. Perfect, Thank perfect. You. Thanks a lot, Gary. Thank you. Right, see you soon. Yeah, have a great day.